guys. So these Omi Verdeo sunscreens, they're really turning out to be my uh, new favorite Japanese sunscreen. They just go on really nicely. This is the Moisture Essence, and I also have the uh, UV Gel, I think it is, and I love both of them. They just are really comfortable to wear, very lightweight, and they are not greasy or shiny, and they... Um, Obviously, I have zero cast because they're chemical sunscreens. Yeah, I get these on Yes Style. They, um, I believe they have, I know they have Tinisorb in them. So, great filters for UVA and UVB uh, protection. Yeah, I'm really liking these. Long story short, Verdio. I don't know if they're still in stock on Yes Style, but if they are, I'll list them down below. Hey guys, we're here at Whole Foods. It actually got a little cold. Yesterday it was hot and steamy, and we had all that, then we had all that rain. And now it's cold. Chris. Yeah. It, the uh, weather thing said it feels like 38 this morning, and I agree with that. It's cold. Yeah, so we've had some up and down yeah. temperatures the past 48 hours. I feel like every every weather condition. <laughs> yeah, and we've had Wind, a lot of rain, rain, and last week was gray and kind Dreary. of gloomy. Yeah, but so muggy. I thought, wow, this is, this is unusual. Yeah. Right? Been strange. Steamy. I was uh, commenting. I like your new earrings. Thank you. You got those from Pandora. They're the Pandora. Yeah. Mm. I, I'm going with the silver. And your, let me see your bracelet. Santa Claus brought me this. <laughs> uh, it has a brother and a sister too, but I'm just wearing this one today. Thank you. I yeah. like these because they're actually crocheted. Are they? Do they stretch out? Um, it's amazing because I have such big hands, mm -hmm. but look how it just fits right over. Oh, yeah. It's beads, right? Yeah, they're, it's beaded. Oh, they're very, nice. I love these. I'm going to hopefully get some more someday. Well, and I'm the Santa Claus proprietor and I already forgot the Sa company. Sashka. Sashka beads, that's right, that's right. Yeah, they're pretty. Um, morning. I got hash browns on the bottom, which I haven't gotten here in quite a while. Oh, okay. And then some quinoa, and they have this little salad over there called Mediterranean Crunch, uh -huh. which I really like. Yeah, that so looks I, good. I got some of that, and then baked tofu on top. Ooh. I didn't put any hemp seeds or anything because I didn't want to wrestle with those the ornery shakers. jars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're too difficult I for hear me you. Yeah, they are. I got rice cauliflower and I put chia seeds and hemp seeds inside the rice cauliflower, kind of mix them together. And there's also a little bit of red quinoa, then I have edamame, black and white sesame seeds, toasted coconut, um, then some roasted cauliflower, peanuts, pumpkin seeds, black and white sesame seeds, coconut, raisins, a dried apricot, it's kind of a medley as per usual. And this ended up being pretty good. I got this to put on top last week. It's this Wan Jan Jashan uh, vegan Worcestershire. Um, so yeah, tasty, tasty. What's that? We watched the chaperone last night. What did you think of that? It's good. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It it was kind of a slow start, but it's got um, Cora from Downton Abbey. <laughs> yeah, she's got this really um, Midwestern accent and because she's from Kansas in the, in the... Yeah. So yeah, she does a good job with that she accent. She is good. Yeah, she does a, a really good job. It's a good movie. I'm yeah, enjoying it. I think you're going to really like the end. I won't spoil it. <laughs> the Chaperone. It's a, it's a uh, masterpiece. PBS, PBS yeah. masterpiece. It's good. Hey guys, I'm here in CVS. They have... Um, Thinking of picking up a few more of these Avino hand masks. I highly recommend them. The repairing, repairing Sika hand mask. They have um, shea butter, colloidal oatmeal. They're just like little plasticky gloves that have kind of some greasy goop inside. They're really nice to do in the evening, um, like after you get out of the shower, your hands are clean to just put these on and let it soak in, and then take them off and just cover your hands and like plain Vaseline petroleum jelly, or I've really been loving the Theraplex or of course CeraVe healing ointment. I, I just finished a tube of CeraVe healing ointment actually, and I need to, I need to restock. It took me 
over a year to go through one tube of CeraVe healing ointment and I use it every single day. But uh, I'm making my way through the Theraplex tub right now, using it in the same way that I typically use the CeraVe healing ointment to my lips. Um, but I've also been using it a lot on my body and my hands and my feet. But yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna pick up a few more of these while I'm here at CVS. Man in the aisle next to me just looked at me like, what the heck is she doing? Oh, sir, you have no idea. I'm here in the body creams, surfing. Don't ask me. No! This is the worst. Like, can we just call this what it is, St. Ives? Uh, <laughs> grapefruit perfume. Like, <laughs> that's all this is. Fragrance. Like, why would you spray that in your face? Dumbest thing ever. Make sure it goes in the right little slot. Lavender scent. Jeez. Yeah, lavender. I'm here in the uh, hair accessory section and these are kind of like the ones that I use, except mine don't have those teeth. I don't recommend the ones with the teeth. I think they pull on your, your hair shaft too much. These, nope, those have the teeth. One any with, with dental work. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need a few more of those. I like these little ones though for little spot curlage. Yeah, I kind of can get creative with the little mini ones. When my hair is damp, I'll gently coil it and clip one of those in place. And then when it dries, it kind of curls my hair without requiring any heat styling. It's a little hair styling tip from somebody who doesn't know what she's talking about. Okay, is it just me or is this Joa kind of trying to pretend it's Too Faced? I'm obviously not a makeup person, but isn't it Too Faced that we talked about during one of the Ulta sales? And I learned that they pretty much try and make all of their cosmetics taste like candy. Was it Too Faced? I feel as though it was. This, I guess, is a K-Beauty brand. Does that have fragrance in it? Jasmine, yeah, Jasmine. Let's not and say we did. Glow activator. God, just probably laden with irritants. Has anyone tried the Sun Balm styling cream? Those of you guys and gals with curly hair. I ask because the ingredients seem like they'd be pretty good for cutting down on high girl fatigue. The problem with leaving stuff like this though on your hair and or scalp is that it can cause dandruff because of the oils. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I know that it helps keep the curls from becoming frizzy. So I get that. And other things in this that would help for that are the hydrolyzed wheat protein can help reduce frizz. Um, but the oils, you know, that can cause not only problems with dandruff in your scalp and seborrheic dermatitis on your face, but it also can cause acne cosmetica or pomade acne on your forehead and sides of the face with products like this. These kind of leave-on products. Mousses. The thing I don't like about this sun bomb, you know, and what lured me, what, what attracted me to it, is that it makes it seem as though it offers some protection against UV damage, but there's no sunscreen filter in this. Your hair shaft uh, does experience weathering, uh, weathering related to ultraviolet radiation changes the color of your hair and uh, can age your hair. Uh, and so, in theory, using products that have sunscreen filters in them that could coat your hair shaft might actually protect against that. But it's not the kind of thing that we have data to support doing, but it doesn't seem like it would be harmful and maybe could protect your natural hair color, uh, as well as your hair, synthetic hair, you know, your hair dye. Um, so yeah, I was kind of hoping that these would have some chemical filters in them because a lot of the UV protector stuff does have, they do have UV filters in them, but I, these don't, so bummer. Bummer bum, sun bum. <laughs> yeah, I always get questions about oils for hair growth and there's no such thing as an oil that will grow hair. 
oils can reduce hygral fatigue potentially and cut down on hair breakage, but leaving an oil on the hair, and I know it's really popular, particularly with certain hair textures, it can really be a useful way to keep your hair manageable. But the problem with it that I always have to point out is that it can exacerbate dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis, and cause um, pomade acne, as I just mentioned, you know, acne breakouts on the forehead and sides of the face. But the oil itself is not going to do anything to alter hair growth, um, the, gro hair, the hair cycle or anything like that. There's really, aside from Rogaine, um, there's really not a topical that will do that. Um, so yeah, like this has biotin in it, but biotin will just kind of help cut down on hair breakage. No different than, no different than, uh, than like hydrolyzed wheat protein would. It's not going to change the hair growth cycle. This has tea tree oil in it. Now tea tree oil could actually help potentially with the dandruff issue because it's antifungal, but tea tree oil is not a pure substance. There's multiple compounds within tea tree oil. It degrades and as it degrades, it can become very irritating and sensitizing. And so that is the main issue with tea tree oil is that it's a high rate of allergic contact dermatitis to it. Um, and if you do use products with tea tree oil, ideally they would be in an opaque bottle um, to protect that degradation. Now the issue with co-washing, while it is great in that it doesn't, it doesn't uh, put uh, stress on the hair shaft from detergents. You know, detergents are the ingredients and products that cleanse, that remove excessive sebum oil. They inevitably strip some of your natural oils and cause dry skin on your on your body, dry skin uh, on your face, on your body, and then uh, kind of dry frizzy hair. But you need to you need to use those detergents to cleanse the scalp. Scalp cleansing is really important. So the myth of, of co-washing is that you could use conditioner to to cleanse the hair, and you really can't. I mean, there's no detergent in there, so you you, you end up with a lot of buildup if you just do. If you just do conditioner only, and that buildup can actually worsen hair breakage uh, in the end, so it's not a great approach. Um, a few times using using a little leave-on conditioner type product might actually be helpful to do that a few times a week, with the caveat that if it's an oily oil-based product, leaving it on your hair, it can get on your face, on your skin, on the on the skin of your face, and on your skin, obviously on your scalp, and lead to seborrhea and acne acne but uh yeah doing it that way i guess can kind of help cut down on frizz and breakage but doing that exclusively can get you into issues what is this apothecary essentials it has fragrance in it as they're telling us on the bottle with the geranium you guys know i don't recommend products with fragrance but it's really hard to navigate hair care products and skip fragrance i mean it really is particularly um for more textured hair types, it is a rare, rare bird that there is a fragrance-free hair care product. I mean, that's kind of why using stuff like coconut oil, even though it's got the issue of of acne cosmetica, seborrheic dermatitis exacerbations, at least it doesn't have added fragrance, so it's less less likely to cause issues in that regard. It doesn't have a bunch of preservatives in it, like methyl isothiazinolone that is present in a lot of a lot of hair care products, hair dyes, etc. Uh, and methyl isothiazolinone, <laughs> I have a hard time saying it, is a common cause of allergic contact dermatitis in hair care products. So it's really hard to avoid a lot of these ingredients in hair stuff. Um, I do hear good things about the Shea Moisture hair care products. So, um, I think these are overall pretty good. I mean, obviously they've got fragrance uh, in the form of essential oils. Any of you guys and gals use the Cantu Shea Butter products? Shea Butter um, is also a good one for reducing high growth fatigue and uh, hair frizz related to detergent cleansing. But I'm all of these obviously have fragrance in them. Do they have MI in them? I'm not seeing it. Are you hidden in here? It doesn't appear as though they do. Yeah, comment below and if you guys have used have used the Cantu products. I'd love to know. Oh. A 
glittery platypus. All right, this is the main reason that I came in here and I'm really excited because these no cow bars are buy one, get one half off. I'm retracting what I said in a prior video. If you will recall, I tried this lemon meringue pie no cow protein bar and I was like, this is foul. I didn't care for this flavor whatsoever. And then two days ago, I tried, was it peanut butter chocolate chip? And I had a cow. <laughs> <laughs> can we just side note can we just bring back that saying don't have a cow <laughs> I was it just I don't know it went a long way <laughs> uh, yeah so I tried I think it was this flavor and it was delicious so I kind of want to get a few more I'm curious to try the raspberry truffle but I see that flew off the shelf comment below on if the raspberry truffle is a good flavor I want to try the blueberry cobbler bar, but I'm a little apprehensive that the fruit flavors are going to be what the lemon meringue was like. So maybe I should just stick to good old shanky peanut butter. You can't go wrong with that. IDK. Comment below. I need some feedback on the flavors. I saw on Amazon they had some more enticing looking flavors as well that I've never seen in store. Hey, little boy. Hey, what you doing? You want to play? Time for fetch. Here's a little one. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Tabby, you're going to get yourself a concussion doing that. He got into his toy box. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted it open so badly he was sitting there growling at my mom while she read her book. A bit passive aggressive. Um, throw the toy. <laughs> There's no denying who the king of this house is. He's King Ty B. Well, hey guys, we're back from CVS and I got a few of those no cow bars. Ty B. But I also purchased um, another tub of this um, sunscreen by, uh, that you can get at CVS that I really like. It's their Clear Zinc Lotion, SPF 50. You can buy it in this little pot or you can get a tube. This is like less, around $4. Um, it's a combination sunscreen, so that means it has zinc and some chemical filters for UVB protection. The zinc will give you UVB coverage and UVA1 and UVA2. Um, and uh, as far as the chemical filters, it just has octocrylene in it. And uh, this particular one is water resistant, which is great. Just allows for a little bit more reassurance between applications, a little bit more. It's just sturdier if it's water resistant, but that tends to make it a little bit greasier sometimes. But I've, I've always liked this one. You know, it does have a cast to it as do most sunscreens with zinc or, and or titanium dioxide will have some degree of cast. But <clears throat> I find in general combination sunscreens, and by combination sunscreens I mean they have a combination of physical ingredients and chemical ingredients, organic and inorganic. Um, so this one's going to be zinc, is going to be your physical, and then uh, what do we say? octocrylone is going to be your chemical. Anyway, I find that those combination sunscreens, they tend to be a little bit of a nicer compromise, if you will, as far as the cast. And I don't know, they tend to be a little bit easier in terms of cast acceptance than the straight zinc or straight zinc titanium dioxide common, the common straight zinc sunscreens or zinc plus titanium dioxide sunscreens. Those are exclusively mineral, is what I'm saying. The ones that have no cast are chemical only sunscreens that instead of zinc will have avobenzone for UVA protection. If it's a chemical sunscreen here in the States or if it's a chemical sunscreen from abroad, it'll have things like tennis orb and uh, juvenile. But anyways, yeah, chemical sunscreens don't leave a cast. Uh, shouldn't. I mean, they can be kind of greasy and shiny depending on depending on how they're formulated, but they don't leave a cast. Anyways, I'm just going to put some on so you guys can see. Um, oh, and it's fragrance free. I forgot to mention that, of course. <laughs> Thank you. 
So the dermatology sunscreen that I wear, the SPF 45 anti-aging sunscreen is gonna be, is a combination sunscreen. So it has zinc and I think that one has octinoxate in it. I can't quite remember. Um, and that one uh, doesn't leave much of a cast, but if you look in some videos, you'll see a cast when I wear that. Their tinted one, their universal tint, however, uh, same thing, combination sunscreen, but it's tinted, so it's less casty. See how the cast on the combination sunscreen kind of gets a little bit, fades a little bit once it's been on for a few minutes? So I find this to be a nice, affordable sunscreen. The cast fades a little bit with time. You can kind of see that, and it's free of added fragrance. It's great if you are going to be outside for a prolonged period of time, A, because it's water resistant, and B, because it's SPF 50. So the higher the SPF, the um, more likely you are to get an adequate SPF, just because people apply an SPF kind of sparingly. It's really hard to apply it at the density you need to to achieve the SPF on the label. So if you shoot for a higher SPF sunscreen, then you'll end up with, end up being just where you need to be, most likely. Uh, so yeah, I, I like this and, you know, it's a little, it's a little shiny, but I think it's, I think it's a great option if you're going to be outdoors for a long, prolonged period of time. And I find that when I work out with this one, it doesn't run into the eyes because it's water resistant. It stays put. Um, sometimes that can really be an issue, particularly with a lot of chemical sports sunscreens. They, when you sweat, the, a little bit of them will run into your eyes and burn and make it hard to continue your workout. And this, I have never found that to be the case. So yeah, really inexpensive and you know, it's the type of thing that I encourage you to go out and, and to pick up, to try, see how it works out for you. And if it doesn't work out for you on your face, you're like, I can't stand the way this looks. It, you know, you can use it on your hands, on your feet, on your body, um, elsewhere. So, you know, it's not a huge chunk of change for this. And you can also get the tube if you're not a fan of the pot, you know, putting your fingers in. I get that. Um, it has preservatives in it to protect from contamination, but... Anyways, yeah, I, I understand the, the not wanting to put your fingers in kind of thing. So, yeah, that's that. Hello? My mom's got her Beats by Dre on. You watching oh. a... I'm watching last weekend's vlog. Oh. You're talking about the shiitake mushroom. Oh, yeah. Situation. Yeah, yeah. The shiitake mushroom. <laughs> yeah, it's nice we've got some sun coming in here. At last, not not enough though, probably. Yeah. yeah, we've got some good sun. This weather has been all over the place. One minute it's almost pitch black out, and the next minute it's super sunny. Yeah, and then one minute you feel like you're in a terrarium because it's so damp and humid. Yeah, that growling you hear in the background is somebody wanting yeah, he's... his laundry dryer ball toy. You have all of these toys, Tybee. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's that sunscreen but um i think i'm gonna wrap up the vlog here you guys i hope you all enjoyed it and if you liked it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen, sunscreen and, subscribe. and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye, bye. have a great week everybody